One of the great curses that we suffer as human beings is the curse of time travel. Now, even though the, the scientists say that time travel is impossible, every human does it. And when we do it, it often makes us miserable or anxious. <clears throat> and time travel is that thing where we're either looking into the past and worrying about what's happened in the past. Like, oh, that thing that I said, did I maybe cause offence with that thing? I didn't mean to cause offence, but do you think maybe they took it the wrong way? Do you think maybe they're cross with me now? That kind of looking back into the near distance and worrying about what happened. <clears throat> and the other kind of time travel that we do is we look into the future that hasn't even happened yet. And we get anxious and worried about what's going to happen going forward. What if this and what if that? And you'll know that you're in the future time traveling because you'll often say things like what if and then follow up something quite scary, really, after the what if. And so it's a great curse, really, time travel to us humans. That even though the scientists say we can't do it, we do. And we go backwards and we go forwards. And we tend to do it in a way that makes us miserable or anxious or fearful. And this is why many people advocate something that's commonly known as mindfulness. Because what mindfulness is all about is to try and get a real determined focus on this moment. Not that moment just then, but this moment. This moment that is gone, really, at the time that I've said it. So there's either now or there's the past or there's a future. I'm moving towards the future. I'm moving away from the past, but I'm only ever in now. And now really is the only thing that we have. And so mindfulness are just a series of techniques, really, to try and help us stay away from the time travel and in where we actually are right here, right now. And one of the things which I really value in terms of a mindfulness technique is something that's not ever really seen as a mindfulness technique. When people talk about mindfulness techniques, they talk about, you know, really engaging with your senses and noticing what you're seeing and really savouring the sounds of the birds or putting food in your mouth and really experience it in the moment. There's all these sorts of mindfulness techniques, but there's, there's one that I particularly enjoy, which is very popular, but is never really seen very often as a mindfulness technique. And that thing is reading. When you get stuck into a good book, and it might be a novel, or it might be something that's uh, not fictional at all. It might be a biography, a memoir, or it might even be something that's teaching you something. Like a history book or a psychology book or whatever. But that act of reading, that act of engrossed reading is actually a mindfulness technique simply because if you're reading something and you're really engrossed in it and you're taking in each word as you're reading it, have you noticed how difficult it is to be thinking of something else at the moment that you're taking in those words? As you're reading your favourite novel, for instance, and as you're reading the story, you can't really think of something else at the exact same time as you're engrossed in the novel. You're just there in that very moment. You're in a kind of flow when you're reading and you're really enjoying the act of reading. As you take in a particular word, it's very difficult to have another thought at the exact same time as you have the thought that is being that you're reading into yourself from the book. And so as you're reading that sentence and thinking that thought, your mind is occupied 
in this present moment of reading. And so I mention this because if you kind of hear about mindfulness and you kind of get it, that time travel is not the greatest thing for us, really, often. And the mindfulness techniques that you hear people talk about don't really resonate with you, perhaps. Maybe reading does. Maybe reading is something that you enjoy. Sitting down and relaxing, you know, with a cup of tea and a a good book. And if you do enjoy that, in that moment where you're reading that book, and really enjoying yourself as you're doing it, you're actually practicing mindfulness because you're not thinking about the future and you're not thinking about the past. You're just here reading those words and focusing on those words and those words only because we can't really think two things at once. And so reading actually kind of commandeers our mind for us in that moment in a really helpful way that just centers us in the here and the now. So if those mindfulness techniques that you often hear of maybe aren't up your street and yet you want to get the benefits of staying in the now so that you're not thinking of the past or worrying about the future, maybe get your favourite book, put your feet up, settle down and get stuck in to the story within that favourite book of yours. And as you're turning the pages and getting engrossed, you're actually, just as a nice byproduct, engaged in that thing that they call mindfulness. The deliberate practice of staying in the now. So if you like this idea, please share it. And you can subscribe for free to this podcast wherever you get them. You can watch, if you prefer videos, at a sliceoftherapy.com. And you can work with me one-to-one. I'm Alan Parry. And you can find me at liverpoolpsychotherapy.co.uk. Thanks for listening. I'll be back again tomorrow.